Now it's the type of Wayne Brittenden's counterpoint. Last Tuesday's revelation that the crippled Fukushima nuclear power plants leaking contaminated water into the ocean and that the Japanese government has known about the spillage confirms the long-held fears of independent experts. The cripplingly expensive and reportedly largely ineffective clean-up by the plant operator TIPCO, the Tokyo Electric Power Company, has led to public demands for more transparency. This has been heightened by the recent revelation that the number of plant workers exposed to alarming levels of thyroid radiation exposures is ten times larger than originally claimed. So this week Wayne looks at the altogether unhappy aftermath of the disaster and its wider implications. Hi Chris, it's been a constant catalogue of cock-ups, cover-ups, half-truths, downright lies and sometimes overdue admissions. This latest revelation the leaking of radioactive water into the sea to harm marine and ultimately human life hasn't just happened. The revelation came the day after Prime Minister and nuclear power devotee Shinzo Abe was re-elected. The bad news would have undoubtedly affected his chances. The Japanese government's also been anxious to conceal the true cost of the disaster. Fifty billion dollars is a conservative estimate. Some public money set aside for community support, health checks for plant workers facing the strong possibility of thyroid cancer, went instead to unrelated projects like lavish wine and cheese parties and funds for the whaling industry, but that's another scandal. The Fukushima Daiichi site's in a precarious state. Water's stored in several hundred tanks, and TEPCO won't reveal the radioactive material that they contain. A 6.7 earthquake would spring leaks, resulting in more contamination than what's already been released into the Pacific. And seismologists predict just such a shake-up within the next four years. It's going to be many more years before we know the full extent and the consequences for our Pacific Ocean. Our Pacific Ocean. In Japan, the disaster has been seen at best as purely a Japanese problem. Even then, most of the population still don't get it. In a Tokyo market, they've been selling produce prominently advertised as coming from the radiation-stricken area, and consumers have been buying it to show their support. Now there's a temporary ban on beef, vegetables and seafood from the region. Too little, too late, and it's not only Japan that's been compromising public health. Shortly after the meltdown, Hillary Clinton, as U.S. Secretary of State, promised Japan that none of its seafood would be tested for radiation before it entered the American market. The American Medical Associations just got around to calling for such tests. A University of New York marine biologist told me last week that his team wanted to include our waters in their Pacific study of cesium levels in bluefin tuna. They contacted a number of New Zealand commercial and recreational fishing vessel captains and urged them to send samples. Not a single one of them did. No one's looking at salmon, a huge potential risk. Concerned people talk of cesium but forget strontium-90, recently detected in up to 30 times the permitted level. It's a cause of bone cancer and leukemia. Migratory fish, of course, travel vast distances. There are worries about sushi. But how about the nori wrapping? Seaweed's notoriously susceptible to radiation. Overall, there's an enormous amount that we still don't know, and few independent experts are working on it. Much of the monitoring at Fukushima has been carried out by the International Atomic Energy Agency committed to promoting nuclear power. So is Japan. With all but two of the country's 50 reactors suspended until they're proven safe, Japan continues to export nuclear power equipment and technologies, mostly to the developing world. Fairwinds.org is a Vermont-based independent but strapped-for-cash organization that's consistently proven to be the most scientifically scrupulous source of unfiltered information. They want to see a zeolite trench surrounding the entire troubled area to prevent contaminated water from entering the sea. They're also calling for an international team of genuinely independent experts and engineers to at last clean up and minimize the risk of further disasters. TEPCO says that it can't afford to do it. Given the ultimate material and human cost of anything less, how on earth can they afford not to? 
Thanks, Wayne. Well, to talk about this unhappy situation, on the line from Vermont in the US, I have Arnie Gunderson. He's a former nuclear industry executive and engineer who's taken a bit of a hammering from the establishment for his whistleblowing on nuclear risks. He's now chief engineer at Fairwinds Associates, an energy consulting company, and he served as an expert witness in the Three Mile Island accident and has taken a deep interest in the Fukushima disaster. What was it that decided you to cross over from the industry and become something of a whistleblower? Well, I, I didn't think I was crossing over. I thought I was doing my job. I was a senior vice president, and I found some violations in our license, and I told the president. And uh, rather than correct the violations, he fired me. So then I went to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and they deliberately botched the inspection and took bribes from my employer. But then I finally went to Congress, Senator John Glenn, who... Uh, who held hearings and um, and I was exonerated, but uh, you know in the process my family was driven into bankruptcy and foreclosure and I was blackballed forever from the nuclear industry. It seems that there's been a huge amount of denial here, not and you've just described how it's rolled out in the United States, but in Japan also, and perhaps in particular, there's been a lot of money spent on Fukushima and Daiichi cleanup. But you're very critical, I understand, of where it's been spent and how it's been spent. Why? I don't think they've spent a lot of money, and that's the problem. Um, this is a half a trillion dollar problem, and uh, the Japanese are nickel and diming the uh, the problem as opposed to tackling it space on. You know, I've said frequently, if you're going to fight a war, you don't do it on a budget, and um, they they seem to be hamstrung by uh, the ability of uh, Tokyo Electric to finance the, uh, uh, the cleanup. Well, this is bigger than Tokyo Electric and likely bigger than Japan. Uh, there's, there's an enormous amount of money compared to their national debt. And I don't really think the Abe um, government really wanted to talk about the, uh, the total cost of this cleanup uh, on a national scale. It, I mean, is this really about money or is it about face? Uh, because for the Japanese to admit now that uh, the contamination uh, is, is, is potentially far greater than they had ever said it would be, would be to lose face. Uh, and yes, you could spend an awful lot of money to try to regain that. Is it about money or is it about face? You know, I, I've seen for two years a lot of Japanese senior officials and managers bowing and apologizing, and I don't see anything changing. Um, so um, if I were the Japanese, I would say, hey, I've, I've, I've heard enough of your apologies and, and how sincere you are that you regret whatever it was you just screwed up. And, um, uh, you know, let's get on with, with solving the problem. The, um, uh, I think the women of Japan really understand that um, uh, they've got to hold the, uh, the, the men who run the country into account. And you know, my experience is that the women are seeing through the saving face, and they're realizing that it's much more important to save their sons and daughters than it is to uh, to save face. A lot of the men are not there yet. The, the men are still uh, of the mode that you know my government right or wrong, and uh, you know we're seeing a major schism in the society between uh, uh, the men who want to walk a, a, a party line and the women who are, are uh, much free thinkers. Well, we've seen that in other contexts as well, I guess. <laughs> What, what lay behind Hillary Clinton's pledge not to insist on testing of seafood from Japan entering the United States? This was a kind of blanket, yes, we support Japan at all costs here regardless, it seemed. Well, I, I think that was really fascinating. You know, as Secretary of State, um, she, um, uh, I think the Japanese were afraid that their export-based economy was going to collapse and... Uh, uh, and, and the United States was going to try to do everything to prevent that. So when Hillary went out and said that uh, uh, th that we wouldn't be testing your products and we, in fact, encouraged more imports into the U.S., um, that was one side of Hillary Clinton. But I saw the other side here in the States. I was an expert on the Indian Point nuclear plant, and that's about uh, nine miles from Hillary's house. And uh, they had a small leak of tritium there, and... Uh, um, Hillary threatened congressional hearings over the small leak of tritium when it's only nine miles from her house. But when, of course, she's Secretary of State, she uh, faced with a much bigger problem 
uh, she made exactly the opposite determination. So I think it's certainly a, a you know, two-faced on her part to play both sides of the street there. We know that there have been some leakages of radiation into the ocean, into the Pacific, our Pacific, as Wayne calls it, uh, and you're right in that respect. Uh, we don't know how far that has dispersed, uh, and, and we probably will never know by the look of things. Uh, what would actually have to be done uh, to, to achieve a, a clear picture of how far that radiation is likely to go? Well, scientists at Woods Hole have known this for at least a year, and, um, and of course I was saying it for even longer than that. Um, what, what has to be done is a trench has to be built around the plant and, um, uh, and filled with something called zeolite. Zeolite is a volcanic ash that very effectively absorbs uh, radioactive material. And it needs to be about two meters wide and down to bedrock, which is about uh, 50 meters down, maybe even 40 meters down. So the other piece of it is that outside the trench, they need to pump down the groundwater so that there's no water getting in. And whatever water leaks out gets trapped in the zeolite trench. The technology is there. I've actually had uh, this conversation with very influential Japanese scientists. And they, they've told me, Arnie, uh, uh, Japan can't, uh, or Tokyo Electric can't afford it. So in the meantime now, so for two years, the technology has been there. In the States, we did the same thing on uh, the West Valley uh, nuclear reprocessing plant. We know it works. The technology is there, but the, uh, the will and the ability to spend the money um, are, are not. But, you know, the net effect is that uh, the Pacific now has, uh, the Pacific near Japan, and likely the whole Pacific over the next uh, five years, will have cesium levels five to ten times higher than what they were at the peak of bomb testing. Um, but this is the biggest release of radiation to a body of water in the history of the world, much worse than, than uh, Chernobyl ever was. Um, and uh, so the, the, the net effect is that uh, uh, you know, we've contaminated the biggest body of water on the planet, and uh, the Japanese have had the, uh, the technology to solve it, but not the will and, uh, and, and not the money to do it. Does that contamination remain, is it, is it, or, or does it uh, reduce over time? I guess it reduces well, it pretty slowly over a long time. Hmm? Yeah, so in, in 300 years, it will completely decay away, about right. 10 half lives. The other thing, though, is that the Japanese and, um, are, are not looking for another very dangerous isotope, strontium. And strontium is in the fish bones. Cesium is in the fish muscle. So the theory is most people eat the, um, eat the muscle and throw away the bone. But if you're eating you know, small sardines or if you're eating uh, uh, stew, of course, now you're eating the bone with it, and uh, no one's looking at the strontium, which is much more water-soluble than cesium. So they're looking for the easy isotopes, and they're not really looking for the dangerous isotopes. So who is running this? These requests uh, uh, that have been issued around the Pacific uh, to for various national Pacific uh, national fishing companies to do undertake uh, provide samples and so on. Who who is who is running that? Is it the Japanese government? Well, that's, that's a great question. Uh, the answer is nobody's running it. Uh, and um, you know, as your lead said, nobody wants to know because they're afraid consumers will stop buying the salmon or the tuna or, or whatever. So these requests are, are, are bogus, you're saying? They have no intention of, of, of testing samples from this part of the world? Yeah, they're non-binding, that's for sure. I think the mm -hmm. requesters are serious scientists, but there's no, um, there's no science, there's no political clout, no political will behind, uh, behind the request to make it happen. You know, we had a case here, when we had Three Mile Island, the utility was, was incompetent to clean up the site. And we brought in a large multinational corporation to clean up uh, Three Mile Island. And that's really what Japan needs to do on, on Fukushima. They should throw Tokyo Electric out. And, and replace them with a large international uh, organization that does this for a living, um, I think we'd have more progress. But the problem is that the large international organization isn't, um, um, isn't going to stand by and, uh, and not accept adequate funds. So I think 
really the Japanese government doesn't want to solve this problem because it has to admit how costly it's going to be to solve the problem. So at the end of the day, I think it does boil down to money. And in the meantime, that uh, series of reactors there, one in particular, number three or four, I've forgotten which, uh, is clearly at real risk uh, of major uh, leakage if we have another earthquake. Yes. Um, three and four are both at uh, uh -huh. structural um, are structurally um, compromised severely because they just had you know major explosions. And on top of that, they have seven or eight hundred tanks in this huge tank farm to the um, uh, inland from the plant. None of those tanks are seismically qualified. So if they do have another large earthquake, it's likely those tanks will break, and all of that liquid radioactivity that's been captured is going to run right off the site and into the Pacific. So, um, the, you know, it's almost like, well, if we pray that an earthquake won't happen, we'll, we'll be just fine. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think prayer is enough here. I think some action would be appropriate. It's part of the cost of the trench around, around the, the, uh, enclosure, the, the, the system there uh, related to earthquake proofing, I imagine it is. Yes. You know, and, and that trench really was maybe $2 billion. Wow. And in the big picture on a half a trillion dollar yes. problem, it, it, it's really, you know... Um, Doesn't loom uh, that large. What do, you yeah, think, right. what do you think New Zealand should be doing to ensure, if it can, the safety of its own seafood? Well, I think as a nation, uh, all of the countries in the Pacific Rim should be you know, checking uh, the random samples of uh, fish that come in, especially at the top of the food chain, uh, because radioactivity, just like mercury, works its way up into the top of the food chain. So it's the... Uh, you know, it's the tuna or the barracuda or the, the, the large fish at the top of the food chain that will concentrate it. And, and so if you see it in those fish, then um, it's important to, to work your way down and try to figure out the, the pathways. Um, and I, I, it's not unreasonable. It costs about 500 bucks a fish to do, um, to do a test. So, you know, if, you, uh, if, if you're willing to spend a... You know, a couple tens of thousands of dollars, um, you can get an, an adequate sample every month and then uh, be able to, to track a trend in this. Um, we're, we're not talking about bankrupt, uh, uh, you know, uh, breaking the bank uh, in, in New Zealand to do an adequate number of tests. And that was Arnie Gunderson, Chief Engineer at Fairwinds Associates in Vermont. We've got to talk about this Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Forget the problems. I'll take care of the problems. They're gonna love waiting for it. It's a massacre.